Hi guys, and welcome to the first Medieval Weapons video. This is the thing I'm working on aside from the game project that Tom and I are working on, the Bandit. So you can see I started uh, these uh, silhouette sketches by bringing a random Google search image that had a bunch of uh, Medieval Weapons, a little bit of levels adjustment, and I ended up with some silhouettes. Starting with a blank canvas sucks, so a really quick way to power through this early stage is to start with the existing image. This is just a starting point of the design process, so at this point it doesn't matter if I'm using image I found on the internet, or somebody else's work, or a picture that I took while I was on vacation. All this image does is it serves as the inspiration for the shape. And that's what you can see I'm doing here. I'm basically uh, coming up with the archetype shapes that I'm gonna use to uh, come up with variations of different weapons. I'm gonna be breaking these videos into parts. This first video is, fo is gonna be focused on uh, 2D silhouettes. The next stage is going to be me modeling a variety of these silhouettes in 3D using either 3D code or ZBrush or Blender or maybe all of them. Once these uh, simplified blockouts are done, I'm gonna go ahead and do a concept paint overs on top. That's gonna be the third video. And after that, I'm gonna take one of the concepts and turn it into a fully polished game model. Uh, this way we'll do some concepting, we'll do some modeling, sculpting, and uh, hopefully learn a few new things. So back to the silhouettes, you can see I'm uh, creating variations of the battle axe. There's no really right or wrong in this stage of the, of the process. What I am looking for is an interesting shape something that looks interesting to me and uh, something that I find appealing. Um, I'm keeping an eye on uh, detail distribution, making sure that uh, it doesn't look too noisy or too boring and bare, uh, as well as I'm judging the individual proportions uh, in relationship to each other. So if it's an axe and the handle is too thin compared to the you know, the, the, the cutting part, then it would feel fragile and it would feel like something that can easily break. Keeping all of these things in mind and having fun. Usually when I start out my sketches, uh, the very first uh, few thumbnails are the most generic looking, but then the further you go, the more weird and uh, interesting they start to look. Uh, it also helps to have a reference on your other screen. Uh, typically, I would Google image search a, a bunch of keywords and look at the things that resemble the object that I'm trying to design. And it doesn't have to be an exact same words. Like, try not to search for a battle axe if you're designing a battle axe search for something else like a, you know a hammer or like uh, and kitchen tools or uh, if unique design is your goal then uh, the weirder your inspiration is the more interesting the final result is going to be you can see i'm now uh, creating silhouettes for warhammer since uh, Battle Axe and Warhammer are very similar in terms of their silhouette, I decided to experiment and try a slightly different weapon that shares the same proportions. I still don't know what style I am going for, so some of my weapons look very realistic, some are too far on the fantasy side, that last hammer slash axe mix is a very sci-fi looking, uh, but I th in the end I'm still going more towards medieval fantasy. So I'll be going back and adjusting some of the silhouettes to kind of make it more fantasy-like. After painting a few of them, I'm starting to combine certain parts and trying different arrangements of them. 
the further I was getting into my uh, thumbnail sheet, the faster these uh, sketches ended up being because in the end I was just using them as Lego pieces to build a new, uh, new uh, kinds of weapons, uh, which is really cool. I, I really enjoy this process and it helps me to get my imagination going. I'm almost done with axes and hammers, now starting to look into the swords. I feel like this part of the process is often overlooked. People tend to jump straight into 3D modeling or just uh, kind of wing the concept as they go. But I think there's a lot of value in taking a deep breath and uh, spending some time uh, coming up with ideas through a very simple and forgiving process. A sheet of these sketches could take uh, a couple hours out of your day, but, but at the end of it I can guarantee that you're gonna have a much better understanding of what you're trying to make. As I'm rewatching my own process and narrating it, I'm noticing uh, some mistakes that I made and uh, certain things that I could do better. Uh, for example, the uh, majority of the swords look very symmetrical. Here you can see I'm starting to break the symmetry and make it somewhat more interesting. But if I remember correctly, uh, a lot of them ended up being very, very symmetrical. And this is something I can address when I get to the actual concept stage. Once I do basic blockouts uh, that I can use for uh, 3D proportion, I can then go ahead and break some of that symmetry. Flip in canvas to get a fresh eye and look at my shapes from a different angle. I'm using the transform tool a lot, Control T for the shortcut. I'm also flipping horizontally and vertically while in a transform mode. The easiest way to do it is you select a part of the, your shape, press Control T to transform and then you right click uh, with your, either your stylus or your mouse. Uh, while still being in the transform mode and pick flip horizontally or flip vertically. Warp is another tool to create curvy objects. Same principle, control T to transform and then right click and select warp. And here's the Lego process I was talking about. It's really fun. Next on the list is shields. Uh, I'm coming up with some shield shapes. These were surprisingly difficult because shield, uh, unlike the sword or warhammer, is a defense item. Yeah, it, it, it can look badass, but it, it, it's also a very simple big shape. Um, there's not much of uh, distinctive details in the silhouette, 
and you can really go crazy with all sorts of different directions. I was overwhelmed with all the options, but I think in the end I came up with a nice enough variety that will let me pick and choose uh, what I want for my 3D model. It's always easier to duplicate an existing thing and modify it rather than starting to draw from scratch. There is a value in drawing something fresh, however, uh, especially when you're going for something creative or a completely different uh, sh shape language. In my case, if you look at them, uh, my goal was to come up with a set of uh, props that share same design language. That's why duplicating makes sense. But if I wanted to create variety in terms of original pieces that don't have to match, then I would probably uh, try to duplicate less and uh, draw more. I am uh, duplicating shields and scaling them down and kind of stacking one on top of another to create a more uh, detailed looking version. Photoshop doesn't have any of the fancy symmetry tools, so it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to uh, draw symmetrical props. So I'm, I'm duplicating and mirroring things a lot to uh, get my symmetry going. And shields are done. Time to get uh, to something more exciting, like crossbows. Uh, crossbow was a, a different kind of a challenge, uh, mostly because a lot of the medieval crossbow references that I had were sharing a very similar uh, design pattern. At least the images that I could find, they were either a very flat stick with the bow attached to it or it's uh, rounded sides and tapered bottom design. Another thing that will eventually help me to differentiate different crossbows apart from each other is their uh, side view, which I haven't done here, but uh, I very well uh, might do that before I get to do the 3D model. trying out uh, more uh, iconic shapes like uh, circles and uh, adjusting the shape of the, the launching mechanism and adding some handles, uh, all the cool things. Just like with the old school 3D modeling, sometimes it's easier to delete a half, work on one side and then mirror it over. After doing a few generic uh, crossbows, I'm starting to come up with the more uh, unique, weird looking ones. That's kind of a natural evolution of design. If you do a simple thing for a while and you get good at it, after a while you get bored and uh, you start getting creative and you start 
uh, trying out new ideas. Uh, inspiration strikes when, when you actually do art. <laughs> if you just think about how uninspired you are, or you can't draw right now because you don't feel the inspiration, well, you're never gonna get anywhere. Get some, get a piece of paper and uh, and start start doodling. That's how ideas are born. You can see I have this wacky double shooting crossbow that has a little lever attached to it. It's really weird. I rearranged my canvas here, uh, basically just extended it and uh, starting to design some more exotic weapon types like the, uh, you know, the, the sword on a stick or the poker type of thing. Sorry, I'm bad with names. In this tutorial, we are going to design a medieval can opener. Because this guy is basically a stick with the sword uh, attached, I'm trying to break it up into smaller chunks and uh, come up with a more interesting silhouette. So maybe like a fabric wrapped around the shaft of this uh, weapon or a more organic kind where the the wooden part is actually like a branch and it, it's got some curvature and more organic uh, silhouette. Here I'm stepping away from the sword on a stick and uh, making some meatballs on a stick. Going for a more interesting fantasy shape. Spike your rolls on a stick. There's plenty of options. You can see I'm now starting to uh, grab parts from axes and swords and even shields and turning them in, in, into halberds or other weapons. You don't have to use shapes literally, it's about looking at them and analyzing them and seeing parts of them that look interesting to you so that you can break them down and come up with something new. Here I grabbed a half of that exotic shape and uh, scaled it, distorted it to come up with something even more weird and cool looking. Now mirror it over and we end up with a spear. There is the shield on a stick. Mm -hmm. 
same shield shape and completely different result. Alright guys, I hope this video helped you to see how you can start thinking about a design process and jump into it and in a very easy fashion start pumping out some quick ideas. In the next video I will be picking one of each of these uh, shapes and we are gonna turn them into 3D models. I'm hoping to try a variety of different uh, software packages so you guys can see different workflows and how to approach similar tasks in different programs. Thank you for your support and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.